Gran Turismo 4 initiated some of the most unique events in the franchise, such as coffee breaks, special conditions events, but most importantly the driving missions. These 34 events are home to some of the most painful races and tests any player might experience in sim racing. But if you manage to beat all of them, you're rewarded with some fairly interesting and even high-powered racing vehicles. In this video, I plan on showing you what I believe are the hardest missions in the game and how to beat them, as I believe that beating these missions means you're more than capable of completing the rest. I've also divided them up into the five colored categories designated by the in-game numbers. And afterwards, I'll also include any honorable mentions that I found almost as difficult as the one I chose. So let's get started with the first set of missions. Mission 6, I believe, has to be the hardest of the past missions in Gran Turismo 4, as it requires some setup and a lot of confidence through the first half before diving deep into the hairpin for the pass. And it was a mission that I didn't first try. So here's how to beat it. Get outside at the start of the mission and stay flat out while passing over the curb. Keep behind the Miata until you start approaching the tight hairpin. Break to dive right in front of the opponent and park it on the inside to avoid being overtaken. Then. Power to the outside and finish the mission. An honorable mention to Mission 9, as this was the only other mission that I didn't first try. However, it just misses out due to the test being much shorter and how much easier it is to cheese. But after all 10 tests are completed, you'll receive the iconic and infamous DMC DeLorean, which can be used in both the Hot Rod competition and the All-American Championship. But I wouldn't recommend it on that last one. Now let's move on to the next category, 3-lap battles. I'd argue that Mission 12 has the toughest combination in this category. Laguna Seca is an incredibly unforgiving track with no safe corners to cut. On top of that, you're forced to race at high speeds in the 4 GT cover car against other fast-paced opponents with some astonishing racing lines. Penalties are prominent and are more than brutal every time they're received. The only thing that isn't difficult here is seeing how difficult the mission is especially if you're coming from the very slow Toyota 2000 GT in the previous mission. But with that said, here's how to beat it. Cut the first turn and get on the outside before the hairpin. Break in turn just before the 2 marker to double apex on entry and exit. Power out wide, then return to the left before the next corner. Break in turn halfway between the 1 and 2 markers and curl around the curb with a wide exit afterwards. Turn in before the 1 board, and use mild braking to sweep through the slight right. Get back to the right before the left-hander and brake at the two-board. Gently enter the turn before powering out at the apex to line up a pass on your first opponent. Don't risk returning to the right if you're past the halfway point up the hill, and just brake earlier than instructed here. Brake at the two-board and just graze the curb on the inside. Exit on the outer curb and continue to corkscrew. Brake once the trees on the right are off-screen and keep right before turning in at the one-board. Cut each turn before returning to the right. Trail break downhill to hit the apex and exit wide, then get back on the left. For this right turn, just send it on the inside and you'll come out on top 99% of the time. Avoid the gravel down the short straight and brake just before the two board. Then push it to the starting line and repeat this two more times. Be sure to stay patient when passing your opponents to avoid risking penalties. You're much faster than all of them, so just keep a fair distance away before exiting turns to provide plenty of power for your overtakes. Now despite the slander earlier, I do believe Mission 11 is another challenging mission as well. Though it's possible to get in the lead much earlier than other missions, it requires a lot of track knowledge due to how unconventional this city circuit is designed. And although it may not be as long as Mission 18 or even 16, it certainly feels like it when your top speed barely enters triple digits down the longer straights. This test is certainly more painful than difficult though, especially when your prize car for this series being the useless J. Leno tank car. An interesting car outright, but pretty much outclassed by the prize car in the next category, Slipstream Battles. There's no competition. Mission 23 is quite easily the hardest of the four tests in this category. Its required techniques are completely different than its sibling missions, and while it is the longest mission in the category, it's also the third longest mission in the game, behind Mission 18 and Mission 34 at a 7 plus minute race. 
and for most of it, you do nothing but breathe down the exhaust of another skyline on an entirely elliptical circuit. Plus, without external resources, there are no instructions on how to tackle this mission. So unless you enjoy puzzles, this mission can initially seem impossible to win. So with that being said, let me show you how to beat it. Keep in tow at the start of the mission until you enter the first turn. Your opponents will start to break the chain, and it's your job to fix it. Aim for either the black or red skyline and begin to bump draft them through the turn while staying in 6th gear. Continue bump drafting them through each of the next 4 turns. After exiting the tunnel, start to back off the lead car and be sure to block any opponents from behind trying to boost on the inside. You need a clean exit to ensure maximum momentum here and not risk another 6 minutes of circular driving if you fail. Slingshot past your bump buddy into the inside of the turn to close the gap to the yellow skyline. Once in range, gradually make your way up the banking to enter the slipstream. Then, slingshot past him back to the inside. Keep it close all the way through and over the finish line. The other missions here are identical to each other, minus the extra two laps for mission 24, so no honorable mentions here. But after beating these four missions, you'll receive the Pagani Zonda LM race car, which is very useful for dominating any low restriction events in the game. But unfortunately, even this gets outclassed by the next two prize cars since it can't even compete in any European events. So let's move on to the first five one lap magics. It's incredibly tough to choose a mission here as there are two that I believe are the most difficult. However, I have to say that mission 27 edges it out as the hardest due to the combination of both track and vehicle. The 787B is a high performance race car on steroids that you're now required to race on the complex Laguna Seca circuit. It's much harder to overtake cars here, especially when losing stability can be even more fatal than a penalty. So here's how to beat it. Since this mission is on the same track as Mission 12, we can apply those same driving lines and braking points on this track. But remember to power out earlier on exit to utilize the car's downforce for that combined rotation and speed. Also, if you get nervous, braking a little earlier into turns will always be better than wiping out trying to full send it. You only get one lap to pass everyone though, so make sure to play it safe when overtaking right before corners, or even into them and soft impacts will go undetected by the marshals, so take advantage to finish fast and avoid penalties. Obviously, an honorable mention to the runner-up Mission 26, with a 90 second wait time and a lap time twice as long as the one we just completed. It's also much more unfair when it seems to require a higher skill level to beat clean than Mission 27. However, the amount of cheesable locations on the track does take the sting out of it, since driving missions don't penalize going off track. Because of this possibility, I can't say this mission is the most difficult of the category. Also, not a difficult mission, but a shout out to Mission 29 for providing this moment during testing. Oh god, that was, that was too close. But after completing these five missions, your garage is greeted with a Toyota 7 race car which allows you to compete in all the Japanese events, bar the historic series since they require production cars. Now let's move on to the final five missions. Before stating the obvious winner here, I'd like to give a shout out to Mission 30. This mission is the only one lap battle that I wholeheartedly believe is actually fun. I know, I know, call me sadistic, but hear me out. The event is coupled with a semi-short hold time on the Sakuba circuit, a circuit with just over a one minute lap time in the provided Impreza. This makes any restart much more tolerable. And when you realize how close you can lose to a Subaru 360, it's clear why this is the case. Though this is the only other test here that provides any real sense of difficulty, it seems to consistently offer close finishes which can heighten any player's experience when it's inevitably beaten. Now for the moment of truth. Driving Mission 34 is easily the hardest driving mission in the game, and a true test of determination as a GT4 player. Having both the longest hold time and longest event time, it's no wonder this mission is so highly regarded. So here's how to beat it. Get to the right at the start of the mission and break it where the track darkens. Exit wide 
and get to the left after hitting the next apex. Break in the yellow graffiti and approach Hatzenbach. Break after reaching the crosswalk and avoid cutting the first curb through the chicane before returning to the right into the S's. Aim to late apex the turns through this section and finish the third turn wide on the right and return left. Break at the red graffiti and cut both turns to exit Hohaishin much faster. Stay left up the hill heading to Flugplatz and break after stabilizing before the purple graffiti. Now keep it flat out all the way through till speed and Kreutz. On the right side of the track, break after entering this gap between the shadows. Hug the inside all the way through the exit and break at the red graffiti entering Arenberg. Power out wide to head into Foxhole with maximum momentum. And take as straight a line as possible down the hill. Return to the right after the compression and break after reaching the striped curb. Cut the inside at the crest and break again at the white graffiti to hug the inside. Keep right heading into the Adenauer chicane and late apex the tight left before cutting over the round right. Now keep the power down heading to Metzgesfeld. Enter on the right and break after this white graffiti to roll into the turn and exit wide. Then break at the first shadow on the left and exit wide afterwards. Take the right turn narrow to be on the left approaching Kallenhard. Then break after passing this warning sign to hit a later apex through the turn. Return to the right before the S-Bend. Break mildly at this shadow to grace past both apexes and exit left. Break after entering these shadows to ensure you hit the second apex through the turn. Return to the left at the top of the hill and break at this shadow to mildly cut the first turn and enter the siphon. Late apex the last turn in second to exit fast and continue through to Breitscheid. Get on the right and break before the end of the curb to avoid slamming the wall on the right and late apex to B on the left into X Mule. Break in turn before the white graffiti to hit the apex before climbing up the hill. Keep to the right before the left kink and late apex to be left into Bergwerk. Break at the end of these shadows and slowly wrap around the long turn to hit a later apex going into the next flat out section. Quick tip, if your gap is larger than a 1 minute 13 at this point, you are guaranteed not to pass. Consider restarting to save the effort or carry on for the practice. Late Apex Klostertal to be on the right before Moot Curve. Break at this shadow to power through the wide left turn and keep up momentum. Exit the following turn on the left and break before the start of the curve into Stylestrek. Power out early to utilize the track space and prepare to overtake with caution throughout the rest of the track. Braking earlier and narrower than instructed when blocked. Break at the apex on the right for carousel to take the bank section here before exiting wide and entering the winding forest. Keep right up the hill until you reach this white graffiti and brake. Gently carry the car through the chicane and on the outside curb to break at this gap in the shadows. Exit wide through the right and keep left to approach the fast bends. Break in the purple graffiti and keep right through the right. Break at the end of the curb and hug both left turns before cutting the incoming right-hander and exiting left. Break at the light and swing around the uphill turn. Get on the right, not in the middle here, and break at this break in the shadows. Double apex these turns to be on the left into Brunshen. Now break at the end of the gray curb and swing around the corner before exiting wide into the short straight. Break and turn at the end of this white graffiti to roll around YouTube corner. Break on the right at this white graffiti and apex later to power out straighter. After the hill, keep left over the crest and break before passing. Maintain out in out lines heading up the hill and into the blind downhill left. Now, don't be afraid to prioritize safety over speed here. Staying alive is arguably more important than speed at this point. Get to the left before Svalbensfonds and break after passing the gray curve. Late apex to keep right on exit and break after passing the red graffiti. Exit wide and continue to mini carousel. Break at the dark track to take the bank inside and exit wide.
brake after the compression into the hill and avoid the curb to maintain stability into Galgenkopf. Brake at the end of this shadow if you're not trying to overtake here and glide around the downhill curve. Now, just carry that momentum through the dotting or straight and check if your gap is lower than 17 seconds. If not, then prepare to cheat. Or for those that have a conscience, just restart. After Tiergarten, brake mildly at these shadows and keep right before the chicane. Then brake after these shadows to enter the chicane safely. Keep left afterwards and brake at the surface division here before exiting T13 wide and completing the longest driving mission in the game. And after receiving the unique 50,000 credit reward and completing the other four tests, you're rewarded with the 1989 Nissan R89C race car, a much more viable car to complete the game in than the Toyota 7. Of course, in order to even have a shot in any of these events, you'll have to beat both the IB and IA licenses. So click these videos to help you get through those tests and into the missions.